yeah, I find that to be almost like it makes me go, is there actually 10%? So, so here's my theory. I'm Victoria, the oily skin chemist. And I'm Gloria, the dry skin chemist from Chemist Confessions. Today, we are reviewing the top two PDRN skincare products right now, so you don't have to. This is a head-to-head -head of Medicube's PDRN Pink Peptide Serum versus VT's PDRN Essence 100. So keep in mind before we get into it that Medicube actually has two different pink PDRN serums. They look exactly alike. <laughs> it's Yes, just read the fine print a little bit. One is a vegan source PDRN and one is non-vegan and sourced from salmon. And the one we are, that we trialed is the one sourced from salmon. This really matters. So when you're shopping, just make sure you give it a read. Yeah. Today, the first question we are going to be answering is what exactly is the aesthetic like? So we'll do the Medicube one first. You are looking at kind of this pinkish Kind of, it looks like a milky texture, but this is this is a very thin emulsion. Yeah, Gloria, what did you think of the texture? See, it's very drippy. I thought it's very, to me, it's neutral. It has a slight film after mm -hmm. it. We should mention that since it's a lightweight emulsion, if you use other water-based products like toners or hydrating serums that's purely water-based, this should go on after those products. Yeah. For me, it was... A completely neutral texture, actually. Yeah. It layers fine. It's not moisturizing, nor is it drying. It's just very middle of the pack in terms of everything. Yeah, and the other thing to keep in mind is it does have a fragrance, kind of rosy fragrance. Oh. It's actually pretty strong. To me, it's on the sharp side. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think it will be a little polarizing if you're sensitive to fragrance. Yeah. Now, in terms of the VT one, I would say this is an even... I want to say stronger emulsion, but it's yeah, still very thicker. thin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it flows, but it has a creamier texture. Yes. It definitely feels a little bit more oily. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was the thing for my takeaway. So we use this about a week now. And for me, it's a lot more filmy. They're both, they're both filmy. And you can see, like, I've got a little bit of sheen on this one. But the VT's texture is just, it's a lot heavier for me. Um, and definitely has a much stronger residue film yeah so to me it's so that finish is the finish has that dragon cream. it almost feels straight up like a lotion yeah and it feels a little That's bit moisturized. Cool. but i will say on my dry skin while it feels moisturizing i definitely can't go without a lotion or cream afterwards oh, i should mention that this one isn't fragranced yes so it might be better for those who are sensitive to fragrance totally now this is actually a nice segue into our next question which is how does it feel on your dry skin gloria in terms of these two, in terms of these two, I'm very indifferent about the texture. I will say it is layer friendly, and while I was both using of them, both of them, while I was using these, I would use both of these after Aquafix mm -hmm. and before Mister Reliable, mm -hmm. and that layering was totally fine. Mm -hmm. I will say neither of them contribute positively or negatively to skin hydration. Mm -hmm. So I'll try it with or without, and next morning my skin feels exactly the same. So that's basically my takeaway. It's very neutral in terms of texture. Consider this less for moisturizing and really as more of a treatment step, despite the fact that the texture feels like it should yeah, contribute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I should mention this isn't a texture comment, but the um, VTPRN package is kind of crappy. So like, <laughs> it will yes, ooze out the side a little bit. It kind of drips a little bit. So yeah, in that it's not department, clean. yeah, yeah. The Medicube dropper is much, much better. Which <laughs> is weird because for us, we feel like droppers are just not ideal in terms of staying clean. Right. Yeah. And then for oily skin for me, I am gravitating towards the Medicube one just because of the texture. I just, I'm not a big fan of like feeling that kind of tacky film that happens with kind of that. It's just, it, and it's weird. I agree. It's like, I don't think it necessarily contributes to the nourishing side, but mm. I don't want to put anything else on my face because it just feels like I'm slightly on the verge of being pretty oily soon mm. yeah so that's a good point yeah all right now we're gonna move on to what chemist thoughts do we have yeah so there's a lot to unpack in yeah. pdr and in general so if you haven't yet listened to your previous episode that gets into the actual science thereof we pulled the ingredient list of both of these to kind of dive into it mm -hmm. and look at all the actives and support ingredients that's there. The first thing that jumps out at me is, first of all, both of these have niacinamide, where the Medicube one should have more niacinamide. Again, if you're in a layer-heavy type mm -hmm. of routine, it might just be a lot of niacinamide in every single one of your products, so it's just something to keep in mind. 
And secondly is the supporting cast. Meta Cube seems to have tried to stuff quite a bit more actors into it. So we highlight this on the key ingredients. There's niacinamide, there's sodium DNA, and I should mention on their packaging, they tout 1%. I will say, K-Beauty is not known for tr- transparency, so I do appreciate that we get to find a percentage. Yeah, and, but what that also means is you have at least 1%, if not a little bit higher of niacinamide Correct. in this, so it's not insignificant at all. And along the right, you have adenosine, which in the previous episode, we mentioned that that's one of the receptors that PDRN is actually supposed to target. Sodium hyaluronate to keep things a little juicier. It's on the low side, but it doesn't matter. It still works on the low side. Ubiquinone. And then chilling at the very bottom, you have cop peptides galore, which at that level, because it's also not advertised, peptides you don't necessarily need a lot of, but it's just, it, it, in this particular product, it feels like it's kind of chilling there. <laughs> and, you know, we, we haven't gone to VT yet, but just one of the comments I have about, you know, kind of these claimed ingredient serums is when there is like, a bouquet of other actives Mm -hmm. that are also put into the serum it kind of doesn't give me a ton of confidence on like which ingredients actually giving the benefits Mm -hmm. i clearly want it to do something but that was just one of my chemist thoughts when i'm looking at the il but yeah in terms of the vt pdrn they tout having a hundred thousand ppm which i find to be really which is equates to ten percent yeah i find that to be Almost like it makes me go. Is there actually ten percent? So, so here's my theory. They t- say at the hundred thousand ppm of the Panax, the Panax PDRN, which makes me think is not of the actual active. Mm. I think it's of the actual material, mm-hmm. which is usually usually the the active has to be in a base of some sort. So, are you getting the actual ten percent of the true active? This is where I'm like, ah, I'm not quite sure, but you know, clearly they're trying to give you as much as possible well if you look at the il you see connections and root attract fairly high on the green list but sodium dna it's on there yeah it's all the way at the bottom yeah and then (laughs) but then sodium dna is the last ingredient on the list which makes you feel like okay it's from it's probably 10 percent of the ginseng extract with some certain levels of sodium dna right right so there's a it's an interesting take it's they actually still also have adenosine in Mm -hmm. this one but Instead of the peptides in the, in the Medicube product, they've got a blend of ceramides at the bottom. You'll see lantuan, panthenol. So it, it definitely has a different kind of feel compared to the Medicube, which is, looks like it's really trying to target more in the anti-aging realm versus VT is like wants to hit more like skin no, barrier she, kind skin of barrier. Like help. Yeah. yeah. There is also still niacinamide here. It should be, at, if I were to guess, it's probably at a lower level than Medicube. And something else to note, not on the active side, is the second ingredient of the VT is isopropyl state. It's a lightweight oil, not inherently bad for you. And I'm not saying VT will do this, but it is some. It's an ingredient that if you're if you have acne prone skin, sometimes this ingredient gets flagged as something that's potentially comedogenic. We say this about any product; you should always patch test. So yeah. for VT, like Victoria mentioned, texture wise, it might already not be super oily skin friendly. Mm. Add it on the high level isopropyl state. If you want to try it, you definitely need to patch test. Yeah. So those are our general takeaways. You'll notice that in this specific comparison, I didn't actually share a lot of the product claims. Mm -hmm. And that's because if you go to different retail, you know, websites, whether it's Amazon, Stylvana or any of them, they're all very different. And what's (laughs) even worse is because Metacube has like two very similar looking serums, you're not really Mm -hmm. sure where the, which claims are pertain to pertain to which product. But all that to sum up and say that I have found the claims to not be very helpful at all. They do not tell me what benefits I might get from uh, this product. And I found myself relying more on the inky and the type of actives that they're putting in than the actual claim advertisements shown. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing I wanted to highlight. To wrap up, we're going to talk about which of the two would we use and why. I think for me, I would still have to vote for the Medicube. Mm. It kind of goes to goes into our same conclusion that we drew from the previous episode, which is CRM and PDRN just has a lot more yeah. data behind it. And so for me, if you just want to dabble in PDRN to see if it does That's anything for your skin and you want to test out what the buzz, buzz is all about, this is still the one to try. Get the source. Yeah. That is actually more looked at. I shouldn't say well looked at, but more looked at. Yeah. And I did try both of these products for quite some time i'm gonna be very honest here i don't i don't know what the vt i know i i honestly like for me it's just it's hard to say what it does 
I will say the one strike I had against Metacube is in the very beginning when I was first trying it out, it did irritate my skin a little mm. bit for a few days. And then went away and it was all fine and dandy. I didn't have that issue with, with the VT and I did appreciate... I don't love the Metacube fragrance, yeah. so I did like It's very, that. like, classic yeah. rose. Powdery, rosy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I gotta agree with Gloria. It's right now, especially if you are attracted by the PDRN language, it's all about sourcing here. Um, and as far as oily skin goes, I don't need, I guess, another layer with any more weight. So that would be something that engaged. But if you, I could totally see, like, if you're in a more humid climate, this might actually just be enough. You know, you don't actually need more. So with that, that ends our PDRN hot Let us know what you guys think. If you have tried these products, let us know if you agree with our assessment or if your use experience is completely different. Yep. And ours just you know, leave a comment below and we will see you guys next week. See you! Bye.